Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear this and see it. Uh, I've taken about three hours this afternoon to figure out how to stream Facebook Live from my computer. It's possible, and there's a great program that uh, helps you do it because I hate holding cameras and I hate holding tablets and technology is great and usually there's a developer somewhere who's going to figure out how to do things and since I'm a great researcher I, f I found it and I figured it out so what you're seeing is kind of like my living room I'm going to let you pan and see my living room that's my breakfast bar and if I can pan hard enough well probably not hard enough that's the dining room all the way back there and my really not really put together living room and this is my computer system where I usually sit and work from home, uh, work on projects, work on single saved and serious, and um, and any other thing that I'm working on, foodie for access, it all happens here. Big 25 inch screen and I just got another big 27 inch screen. Um, so this is where I make a lot of stuff happen. But certain people who will not remain nameless, Brandon Chuck Brown, asked me to start doing my Facebook Lives. And I'm not a big Facebook Live person. I'm a writer. I'm a typer. I'm, I'm a poster. So talking live is not something that I like to do. Talking on the phone, I talk to my friends all the time. And I say, really, I guess, great stuff. So people say, well, you ought to do a Facebook Live. And you ought to tell people what you think. And so here I am at my computer and maybe I'll start doing a little bit more of these because sometimes I do, sometimes I come up with a thought and um, since everybody else is sharing thoughts, I think I'll start to do that. But this morning I saw a video from a very good friend of mine. She's worked with us with Single Saved and Serious and um, she shared a video this morning with, which was actually very encouraging and inspirational. But it got me thinking that I've been seeing somewhat of the same vein of videos and comments or memes where people notice that people come and go. People are in their life for a season, not for a lifetime. People are promising to be there and they're encouraging you and patting you on your back and then they disappear. And I've noticed that um, a lot of my entrepreneurs are going through that. They're feeling that, you know, where is everybody? You may have started off on this train with me, and now you're not on this train anymore. So this isn't just her video. This is several videos I've seen where um, I hear it, where people are leaving. People are not here, and they're not going with me to the next level, and they're not um, going with me for the full journey. And I guess I'm here to tell you, that's life. That's life. Um, I have a set of parents who, and you're going to hear me talk a lot about my parents, because I love them, and they were excellent parents, and they gave ridiculously great advice. My father used to say, if you get one or two good friends, count yourself lucky and blessed. And literally, if you really are drawing a crowd, you want to be careful of that crowd. Don't put your faith in that crowd. Don't um, get stuck on needing a crowd or even having a lot of people support you in what you do. And this was my father's advice. He said, if you get one or two, move on. And I want to encourage someone today. If you started off a couple of years ago with things and people were like, oh yeah, you're going to make it. You're going to do it. Let's go. And now as you're grinding, and as you're hustling, there are very few. That's why it's called the faithful few. Because people are not ride or die. People are fickle. People have agendas. People come with wanting their own needs met, not necessarily wanting to support your own. And so you're going to have that. My advice, which I've written this already, is stay focused on your goal. You've got to literally be like a horse with the blinders on, and you've got to stay focused. You're going to maybe pour into those one or two people that you get, and they're going to be there for you. They're going to continue on. 
They're going to be your ride or die, long-term friendships, decades long. Those are going to be your people. If you get a crowd, that's great. You might get that crowd for a moment, but do not put any real depth of your trust in a crowd or in the people who slap you on your back and say, oh, we want to partner with you. Oh, we want to work with you. Oh, we think you're doing great. Let me sit down and talk with you. You're going to treat those people with that grain of salt. You're going to treat those people like, well, let me see if we can collaborate. Let me see if we can work, but never lose sight of your goal. As you, Debbie on this morning, she talked about when you're on one vista and mountaintop and you're going to get to the next higher summit and you've got to go down into a valley or when you coming, as she talked about the Israelites coming out of bondage in Egypt and having to go across the desert before they made it to the promised land. And I love that story because when you're on a journey to get to where you need to go, you are going to come out of one set of bondage. You're going to go through a desert, dry, difficult situation before you get to the goal of whatever it is that you're trying to get to. And you've got to stay focused. And she was very, very correct that the Israelites didn't stay focused. They were like, well, we should have been back in Egypt. We had all those leeks and onions. And we're out here eating this manna every day, same thing, twice on Saturday, and we're not really feeling this experience. And yet, they don't realize they were being made in that experience. They didn't have a pile of Egyptians who had already built the pyramids, already built houses, already had everything for them. They had to figure out how they were going to do this. But they forgot the most important thing. They had God and they had Moses. Moses who went around tapping rocks and water just came out of it. Moses who tapped at some water and the doggone thing parted. They forgot that God used Moses to bring them through that experience. Now I'm going to tell you something. When they got to the edge of the promised land, what happened? What did they do? They sent 12 spies into the land to look it over and say, tell us about the land. And those 12 spies came back and they said, oh my God, it's gorgeous. The fruit, look at the fruit. Oh my God, there's animals, there's, the land is beautiful. But 10 of them said, there's some giants. And they look really, really strong. They got really good weapons. And we don't have anything compared to that. There were two. Two spies who said, wait, but we've got God. And we've had Moses. So what are we missing here? What do we need? And who did the people, the multitude, listen to? The 10 people who told them, we can't do it. We won't make it. Now, those 10 people have been in the crowd and came through that Red Sea and everything else. And yet, for some reason, they and a whole bunch of people said no. Moses had two people. And guess what happened? Those 10 spies and all those multitude did not go over into the promised land. They died wandering around, still eating manna now. Now, God will take care of you. He'll still give you some manna. And they said their clothes never got old and their shoes never fell apart. But they didn't make it to their goal. Two people and the descendants of that crowd who didn't understand, didn't even see those Red Sea parted, they made it over. So this is what I'm telling you. When you're going through that desert experience, when you're going through that hard time and goodness gracious, the goal doesn't look good, the account is overdrawn, can't get any more credit, your job is giving you a hard time, the car engine light comes on when you need to get it inspected, all of those things going on, don't listen to the multitude, don't even look for them. Listen to those two ride or die people who said, wait a minute, haven't you come through something like this before? Haven't you made it through before by the grace of God? Haven't you been able to overcome all sorts of obstacles that other people thought you couldn't overcome? So listen to those people who say, wait, 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 let's encourage your faith. Let's raise you back up and stick to your goal and make it into the promised land. Do not worry about the people who are going to fall off in the desert. Worry about the people 
who are your ride or die and tell you to keep on going.